ostensibly channels uh, the government's campaign for February 21st and for roll call for the week. Chairman Heumann? Here. Vice Chair Kulshaw? Here. Commissioner Quinn? Here. Commissioner Velasquez? Here. Commissioner Barrichello? Commissioner Lopez? Commissioner Gola? Here. We have quorum. Okay, Commissioner, the other two commissioners both have an excuse absence. So um, next item on agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. If the Vice Chair would like to do that, that'd be great. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Before this meeting, we have three items on the consent agenda that were discussed by studies uh, by the Planning Commission. I know there were a couple of minor corrections on the minutes, um, and there was also a stipulation on item number three. If staff wants to read that into the record, that would be great. Please. For item number three, uh, the addition of PDP stipulation number 10, the applicant shall work with staff to enhance bump outs on front elevations along Ryan Road. Okay, thank you. To the audience, those three items, uh, item number five will be an action item, which is the quick trip gas station. But the other four items that we have on here, is there anybody in the audience that wants to hear on any of those cases? Seeing none, what's the commission's pleasure? Yeah, I'll move to uh, approve the consent agenda per the stipulations by staff and commission. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have a second? Any further discussion? For the record, I will be abstaining on item number one as I was not here for the January 17th meeting. If no other uh, questions, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you to the applicants that were here for that item. Thank you to the historic preservation guys who worked very hard on their project. Um, it's a great item to protect the South Stocking neighborhood. So thank you to Derek and the neighbors that were here for that. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the rezoning and preliminary development plan for a quick trip convenience store and gas station. So yep. Ben, you got the the floor. Yep. All right. Uh, good evening, uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. This is a presentation on PLH 23-0044, Quick Trip Convenience Store and Gas Station. This is a project site. It is located, could you guys see that, by the way? Yeah? Okay. Uh, it's located on the northwest corner of Dobson and Ray Road. The request before you is an amendment to the PAD zoning for commercial uses to permit a fuel service station with convenience store. And also a preliminary development plan for site layout and building architecture for a fuel station with convenience store. A little bit about the proposal. Uh, the project site, it's about 2.51 net acres. The convenience store that is being proposed, it would be at 5,312 square feet. And in addition to that, there would be a gas canopy or fuel canopy, which would be about 7,287 square feet, and it would house eight fuel pumps. Uh, code requires a total of 30 parking spaces, uh, and 50 are being provided by the applicant. A little bit of architecture for you guys. So this is the east elevation. This is the front elevation of the building itself. And then the applicant did a good job of using different materials that tie back to the existing tutor time that is located west of the subject site, including uh, EFIS, uh, stack stone. Um, there's also a wainscoting uh, element feature. And also there is uh, almost like a score line type of feature as well that is seen on site currently. A little bit more on the elevations. This is the west elevation being proposed. So this is the back side of the, of the building itself. Once again, you can see that wainscoting at the bottom with the split face CMU block. 
along with the, uh, there's almost like a black uh, block that is gonna be used as well that's done vertically across the uh, building that mimics the existing building located west of the site. On this one, you have the north elevation and the south elevation. Once again, four-sided architecture and with the stacked stone. And this is a proposed canop uh, fuel canopy. Uh, once again, they will be using stacked stone on this one as well to tie back to the quick trip. All right, neighborhood outreach. There was a neighborhood meeting held on October 3rd of last year with 25 neighbors in attendance. A uh, meeting sign was posted on site and on social media via Nextdoor. And uh, as of writing this memo, staff is aware of support and opposition to the request. <clears throat> Some of the neighborhood concerns, uh, potential transients, uh, potential increase in crime and traffic. And in total, uh, there's 13 neighbors in opposition and three neighbors in support. That was done before this uh, PZ memo was drafted. We did do an addendum memo that was put on your, on your um, table there. And we do have three neighbors that are in opposition and one that, um, yes, three neighbors are, are, are in opposition and one neighbor that is uh, in support to the request. That is in addition to what I'm showing here. All right, and uh, traffic, that was one of the main concerns. Uh, a traffic statement was provided by the applicant and has been reviewed by our traffic engineer. And also key note, a capital improvements project is in the works that will eliminate left-hand turn lanes into quick trip by traffic heading north on Dobson Road. All right, staff recommendation. Uh, the proposal is in conformance with the general plan. It is a compatible land use and staff does recommend approval. And I'm available for any questions. Chairman, Commissioner Flynn, um, <clears throat> through the chair, Benjamin, um, can you go over that last bit about the lane change thing? There is that. Yeah, uh, I have a mouse here, but let's see. So if you look on your screen, the up and down uh, that is Dobson Road. Yeah. If you see on the top hand side, there is the project site on the left. There will be a median that is installed there to prevent any left-hand turn into that quick trip along Dobson Road. From north and south. Correct. Correct. Other questions? <clears throat> ben, stay on, let's for, put that map back up, please. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you put a median on that intersection, what does it do to the um, shopping center on the northeast corner where you have Fry's? Do you then eliminate that left-hand turn out of that center completely? Correct, so that would eliminate any southbound um, turns onto Dobson Road. Okay, in reading the staff report, one of the things I saw in there that it talks about the traffic that would be generated by this would be less than the original PAD. Well, the original PAD has completely changed from when it was 25 years ago. So I'm kind of curious on the staff report, you guys said you studied the traffic analysis. Is the traffic analysis based on today or based on something that was 25 years ago? I'm kind of curious. Yep, acknowledged. <clears throat> uh, I believe that would be a question best answered by our traffic engineer, uh, okay. Dana. So if you can answer the question in terms of what was proposed 25 years ago and has been altered numerous times with tutor time and some other things. Um, why is it that the applicant is saying there's gonna be less traffic generated than it was gonna be generated back when the original PAD was done? Sure, commissioners um, and, and chair. I We have looked at it in different ways. We looked at it compared to the, we have a, the statement that we got compared to the original PAD that was owned. Um, we also have it compared to um, the previous use that was there compared to the use that's there now, specifically for the pharmacy versus the, the, the gas station itself. So we've looked at it in multiple different ways. So are you saying the gas station is going to generate less trips than the, the, the CVS was going to do? Well, whatever it was in those days, the OSCA? Um, th there's different ways to look at it. Yes, it, the, the short answer is yes. What we do when we look at, especially trips for a gas station, 
we look, most of the trips that are generated by, or that come to a gas station aren't new trips. They're trips that are already on that road and they stop by, get gas and continue on. So we call those pass by trips. So once you take the pass by trips off, so the net new trips that would be on the road, it is less than what would be at a pharmacy for both the PM peak hour as well as daily trips. Hmm. Okay. Um. We can, I guess we can disagree on some of them. I think a Quick Trip does a great job and does generate a lot of traffic. I've been around enough of them, and they, they do a good job that way. So maybe it's going to not, but I also think there's going to be a lot of people who want to um, use that facility as well and stuff. So, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions for – we have another question maybe for traffic. So, Vice Chair. Um, so, Dana – as it relates to those traffic projections, mm -hmm. what are those based upon? And is it an industry standard? Is it a city of Chandler standard? Can you talk a little bit more about how that is done? And is it is it something that is universal across, say, all cities in sure. Arizona? Sure. Again, um, th through the chair, these are national standards that we look at. So it is pretty consistent. S some cities can have their own for specific uses. But the ones that we use are nationally recognized, and most of the agencies, especially in the Valley, typically use them. So um, it is very standard practice to use them. Um, we do allow um, some, some adjustments for if we know something specific at, about a particular use. But as far as the convenience in gas stations, it's, it's pretty um, – the studies have been done, again, across the country and are very robust. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you answer a question also on, on the – the chart that's up here right now, you have a convenience store weekday totals of 4,100 trips, 3,100 of those being pass-through trips, but an additional 1,000 trips being new site. Mm -hmm. And then below the pharmacy drugstore with the drive-through, which there was no drive-through originally on that site, is 1,800. So are you saying that, I, I'm conflicted on, you're saying that it's going to be less than what was originally, there, what was there originally? So yeah, the gas station, once you take the pass by trips away generates that 1,014 versus a pharmacy would have, would be expected to generate 1,847. So about 700 more trips a day. Hmm. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Paul? Yeah, please, absolutely. <clears throat> the, so the numbers for stop by and in this calculation were. Are these anticipated totals going to differ now that we're not allowing northbound left turn into the site? Um, Commissioner, through the chair, they are not, this, this particular calculation doesn't look at where the trips are coming from. Um, and typically when we do pass by it, we usually only, especially for a gas station, we typically only count in the right in, right out, because those are actually, you know, just going to truly come in and then keep going. On, on their way wherever they were destined to originally. The left-ins, we get into a different uh, calculation there, and, and those are more of a diverted trip. So these these would not be impacted by putting in that median or removing that left-in ability. Okay, thank you. And then, mm -hmm. and then follow-up, did I read in the traffic study that they did a uh, uh, at least a 24-hour field observation, or maybe it was an eight-hour field observation and track both pedestrian and vehicle traffic across this intersection? Um, again, through through the chair, commissioner, yes, um, they did do an observation here. We didn't require the study. The study was provided as an additional support for the project, but they did do that above and beyond. Again, we didn't request it, but it, it was done, yes. And are there any significant findings there that, that would impact our position on traffic at that intersection? Um, nothing. No, there's there's plenty of, of capacity at this intersection, so nothing that would negatively impact the intersection itself. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Follow up on that. This is the third most dangerous intersection in the city of Chandler, if I read the report correct. Is that true? Um, or one of the most dangerous intersections in our city? That is, Meg does a calculation, and, and I believe you're referring to the Meg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, based on their calculation, they have it as a high-risk location. Okay. So adding to additional traffic, whether you're saying it's passed through. So my question would be, following up on the traffic, somebody's going eastbound on Ray Road, 
Quick Trip has a great convenience store. The gas is going to be cheaper than the gas station across the street. How do you deal with the U-turns going on there, adding to an intersection that's already a dangerous intersection? So we are working on a, a project at this intersection to Im improve capacity and add uh, dual left turn lanes at this location. Um, it's one that's been on the you know on our radar for a while, and it's a CIP project that we were lucky enough to get some uh, safety funding uh, grant funding for. So. Um, Project that's under design now will be, I believe it's in the 25, 26, it's, it's projected for construction. So that certainly will help. And as far as U-turns, that's not uncommon for an arterial, arterial intersection like this. So, so would we would you, anticipate that. Would you say that I see enough U-turn intersections that have numerous accidents because of U-turns because of turning radius. Would you say making U-turns is less dangerous than going straight or more dangerous? I can't answer that question. It, it depends on a lot of factors. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Coulter. Dana, can you comment when we talk about this intersection, I say we, when Meg has classified this as being a dangerous intersection, do you know any of the data on what types of, what's qualifying it as that? Is it um, number of accidents, type of accidents? Are the accidents happening at the intersection? Or are they happening you know, north or south or east or west. Can you comment on any of that for us sure. to help, you know, get a, a clearer picture of what what might be happening at this intersection beyond the numbers that are on paper? Mm -hmm. That's actually a really great question. And through the chair, um, uh, Commissioner, one of the things that Mag or the thing that Mag looks at is is volume of crashes only. It doesn't look at um, necessarily a crash rate or how many crashes based you know per a certain volume that goes through which is how we typically look at them unfortunately they don't have that the data to, to support that um, they also rank in their crashes anything um, a, a fatal accident highly weighs in their crashes so if there's any fatal accident within it, the time period that they look at it automatically rises to the top of the list so um, theirs is very he very heavily weighted with that um, and as far as what constitutes a crash that they're reporting at that intersection, it's actually anything that police code to that intersection. So it could be happening north, south, east, or west of that intersection. Unfortunately, with the level of detail that they have to do for the whole region, they're not able to sort that out or to filter out those, which is something that we do when we look at it on a citywide basis, because obviously we have much less um, data to sort through on that. So we definitely look at it in a, in a different light. I th hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. That was helpful. Okay. Um, related to the timing for the capital improvement project, can you speak more to the actual timing of when you plan to do those improvements and what is the extent of the project? Um, is it just medians north and south of the intersection or is it extending further than that? Um, again, great question, Vice Chair. Um, the, it's under design right now, the intersection improvements. And we got uh, federal safety money for construction in the federal fiscal year 25-26. So that money would be eligible um, of October 1st of 25 that we could start construction on that. Um, and since we're, we are doing design now, we would hope to be ready early in that so we could start bidding. My guess is it probably wouldn't go to construction until after the first of the year. Likely by the time we actually bid it got awarded. Um, and we're able to start construction. Um, the extent of those improvements includes, um, it's, it's capacity improvements, which include dual lefts on Dobson north and south of the intersection. Um, and it includes a lot of utility relocation to make that happen. Okay, keep going, okay. you're fine. Sorry, the civil engineer dominating. Oh, that's, that's no, a good traffic question here is a little fine. scary. Um, have, Given that if this were to be approved, the median goes in with the capital improvement project, there will no longer be left in, left out at this location. Have there been any conversations either at a staff level or with the applicant about the potential, and I'd like to get your feedback on pork chops. Um, those in the industry know what I'm talking about when I, I mentioned pork chops and they can be effective, sometimes they're not effective, but in order to try and start establishing traffic patterns for those using this corner, regardless of what's going to go in at this corner. Um, can you comment on that and if there have been any conversations about that? 
That's a good question. I'd have to talk, unfortunately, have to talk to the CIP um, project manager on, on how far they are in the outreach process. I'm not sure if they've reached out to, to the applicant at this point to have that conversation. I know it is part of the project. I just don't know where they are on, on that specific task. Um, as far as port chops, um, we haven't had the greatest success with those, on, especially on larger roads like this. People tend to be able to drive around them and get whatever direction they wanted to go to begin with. So we haven't had the greatest success with those on, on arterials in Chandler. And again, throughout the industry, that's not atypical um, for a large, you know, large roadway like this. Um, it's not something that we would traditionally do at this location. A couple of quick other questions. You say you have federal money. Is it fully federally funded? It is not fully federally funded. Um, the capacity improvements um, were tied to safety with the dual left turns, so those are federally funded and anything associated with that is. But we were doing some other improvements to add bike lanes and things like that that were not safety related or not didn't have a cost benefit ratio that made it safety eligible. So were there be double left hand turns north and south on Dobson as well? Yes. <clears throat> okay. So the possibility of this happening in 25, there's a possibility, but also based on budgets and things like that, it may not happen as well, correct? It is in the CIP, unless something changes. Um, I haven't heard anything about it getting pushed out and it would affect our federal funding if we did lose city funding on that. So okay. I'm very hopeful that it doesn't. Okay. I mean, I mean, projects are going through the roof in terms of pricing and stuff, so you never know. That's, Understood. There's no certainty in terms of that, so, okay. And right. certainly the safety eligible component of that, if, if it did come in over budget, we could ask for closeout funding or things like that to help offset okay. if we can tie it back to the safety component okay. of that project. Great. Any other questions? Commissioner Vance, yes. Jeff Foley. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, question, Dana. Uh, ben, can you or Dana bring up the map, the plan view aerial um, map? Thank you. Thank you. Just to follow up to Commissioner Quinn and Coach Shields. Are you just looking for that one? Yes, thank yeah. you. Okay. So the improvements, Dana, that go um, north on Dobson for the median that would prevent the uh, the left turn in right northbound into QT, would would that also prevent um, east to west lateral movement from that northeastern Burger King shopping plaza cutting straight across it would, as well? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Planning. Okay. I just have one question for Ben. Yes, please. Can you pull up the site plan, um, the proposed site plan? Um, my thought, or I guess my question, uh, relates to pedestrian traffic into the convenience store from Dobson. Um, you know, you're walking on Dobson and, and you want to come in, whether you're coming from Seton and you're a teenager that needs a yep. soda or something, um, or you're just a, a pedestrian. Is there a way to encourage them instead of to cutting across the drive aisle and the fuel pump area? Is there a way to encourage them perhaps through a sidewalk that would get them at least closer to the building along that, that drive aisle to where they could have, you know, more direct access to the building versus cutting through the parking island yeah. or the parking area. Yeah, that's certainly the ADA access and that all makes sense. That's a really good access there, but. I'm just gonna double check real quick. I apologize. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah. I know you'd need to talk with the applicant about it, so. But Ben, I think it's a good call out <clears throat> whether this gets approved tonight or not that the safety features that to, to the vice chair's point, <clears throat> kids coming from Seton, you also have Anderson Junior High right up there that <clears throat> the safety factor of those kids being able to get in and out of that thing, um, whether there's calming, to, calming something to help calm down the traffic going in and out fast, um, that would be also a concern as well. Because <clears throat> you do have, like I said, you have Seton right there and you do have Anderson a block away, so, okay. Um, one other question on landscaping. Did I read that the size of the trees were fairly small? Did I read that? <clears throat> you have a landscape plan. Uh, Chairman, that's definitely a good question. Um, the uh, landscape itself, it would have to meet code requirements for the minimum size. 
Okay, because I, I thought I saw some eight foot on planning versus 12 foot on planning. So that would have to, that would get changed in the narrative or would it get changed by, you know, when it comes back through or <clears throat> kind of curious. Uh, Chairman, if that's something where, um, if it's eight, eight feet right now, you want to increase that height, we can definitely see if we can work with the applicant to increase the, uh, the tree size. Mr. Vasquez. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, Ben, I think on the landscape, good reminder, on the landscape, I think they were counting existing trees as some of the larger as a 48 inch box equivalent. But I think to the chair's point, I believe everything was downsized to a 24 inch box on the schedule from my recollection. And I, I think, you know, upgrading some of those to a 36 would be appropriate. And at least in those islands, I think there was six or nine trees that may provide shade. If those could be 36, notwithstanding, you're still counting the, the larger existing as a larger tree size, but that makes a lot of sense on those trees that would provide shade to the, the parking zone. Through the chair commissioner, yes, we can definitely work with the applicant to increase those uh, tree sizes to 36 inch box trees. Thank you. You're welcome. Ben, another question. <clears throat> Since this intersection is gonna be widened, I would think that part of that corner is gonna go away. I would think normally that happens. We have to take right away out of there and stuff. So are they counting some of the trees that are there now down that corner there and go away when once the intersection's widened? Uh, <clears throat> um, Chairman, I don't we don't have the final footprint of it. We have a pretty good idea of what that intersection will look like, but as we go through design we'll we'll finalize that and see where exactly that, that lands. Um I wouldn't think it would, it's definitely gonna impact some of the shrubs that are out there, but I don't know how much it would, I don't think it will impact trees that much. Okay. I mean, you're probably gonna at least have to take probably 15 feet on every section, every part of that. If you're gonna go we, double. We were trying to widen to one side on this one. So we were trying to keep it so we didn't have to disrupt both sides, but um, that's something that we're still looking at to see if that's possible or not yeah. at this location. I mean, if you're doing double turn lanes, you're probably gonna have a, a right-hand turn lane as well you're gonna to have to take probably at least 15 feet, I would think, on each corner to add those extra lanes, so, okay. Huh? Okay, thank you. Thanks. Any thank other you. questions for staff? If the applicant wanna come up and make your presentation, that'd be great. And then I know we'll probably have more questions for you as well, so. Yeah, of course. You can state your name and address for the record, that'd be great. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman and members of the Commission. My name is Brian Greathouse with the law firm Birch and Crackiolo. Our address is 1850 North Central Avenue in Phoenix. Um, thank you, Ben, for the presentation. Wow, you guys get into all the, all the details of the case really quickly and you dial in. Um, I'm going to make an abbreviated presentation because some of it was covered earlier by staff and others were covered as you guys went through your conversations. Um, with me tonight, is Daniel Chambers from QT. We have our professional traffic engineer, Jamie Blakeman, who's with Lokahi and prepared the report that you were just discussing. We have Robert Hannon, who's our civil engineer and an associate with my firm, Madison Leak. We're all here to answer any questions that you all have. Um, as you know, this is a three corner commercial intersection. Uh, the southwest corner are existing single family homes, and this is a redevelopment of a vacant building that has failed to find a sustainable use for many years. Um, there's no traffic coming to and from it today, but it does have entitlements for commercial development, including drive-through uses. So uh, it's a two and a half acre site. I believe two fast food restaurants could go on this as a permitted use by right. I believe that's also in the traffic study when you look at what the entitlements are, because the original entitlements were on a larger area much of that area became Seton's, the Seton School to the north, their parking lot did not develop. We believe this quick trip makes great land use sense on this site, and it will definitely be sustainable and a good use for the uh, community for people to get goods and services. Um, we weren't as savvy as staff where they were able to turn the site plan, our, our north arrow is to the right, but the areas on the site that you see that have the kind of conceptual or rendered 
landscape areas are areas that are enhancing or including more landscaping than exists today. Uh, we're utilizing two existing driveways that provide direct access to the QT, and we're also utilizing an additional access point that's to the west of this site where there's a cross asset access easement up there. So we're not changing traffic patterns. Uh, and as you, as you heard from uh, the city's traffic engineer, many of these trips are pass by trips. They're already on the road today. I personally believe accidents are caused by traffic patterns. Uh, there's no median in Dobson Road. When I drive down there, people are shooting left and right out of everywhere, fries, all the different driveways that are along there. The median will, I, in my humble opinion, will uh, be a great improvement to what Dobson is today. Uh, this shows that our footprint of our building is going to be must, much less than exists there today. Uh, the, the asphalt location and area will be much less than exists today. Obviously, that increases landscaping and it decreases heat island effect, which seems to be a major focus of uh, most cities and sustainability efforts. This is a perspective from Dobson Road looking at the existing driveway. This is a perspective from Ray Road looking at, looking at the site from the existing uh, access point. And this is the bird's eye view. Uh, as you can see, there's a significant landscape buffer on the street side of this lot. The buildings are set back extremely far from the roadways. Uh, and this, the, the buildings that we're proposing are more than a football field away from the nearest home across Ray Road. So we think it's a great location for this specific use. Uh, as you heard, we had a neighborhood meeting, approximately 25 people attended. That was back in October. Uh, we heard traffic, schools, and safety concerns. I'll address some of those here in a minute. Uh, Daniel Chambers and I personally knocked on doors two different days uh, in the neighborhood, one on January 17th and one on January 20th. And then we've met with Seton Catholic and we've met with Tudor Time. Uh, these are the door knocking results. We spent two days out there. One was an afternoon evening during the, a weekday. And then we went back on a Saturday, two to four, to try to connect with more people. Uh, the overall results from that were we visited 45 homes. Uh, we had 10 people who said they were neutral or had no opinion. Uh, seven were very supportive and one was in opposition and the rest were either not home or they had no solicitation, solicitation signs. And we tried to honor that, that sign. Uh, traffic was discussed many times. Many people said they really like QT, they love the food offerings, they love the coffee, uh, they're looking forward to the development to happen. Um, and that paints a little bit different picture than uh, some of the opposition that you'll hear today when they sent out flyers throughout the neighborhood uh, soliciting some, some opposition and you all received those opposition emails. Um, Mr. Chairman, you were alluding to the prior plan that was approved on this site. This, this site obviously did not develop with 67,000 square feet of retail. Um, Dobson and Ray were originally planned to have all that traffic from these developments. It didn't occur. The Osco drug obviously was built. The Tudor time was built down where it says proposed retail E. Um, so the overall effect of what was developed here versus what was originally planned is much less intense than was originally proposed. Um, you've all talked about the traffic counts. Um, as you heard, most of the trips to a QT are passed by, men, by nature, approximately 75% that are already on the road. You heard about the median improvements on Dobson Road. Uh, but I want to emphasize again that QT is using existing driveway locations. This isn't a vacant dirt lot with new development that's generating new traffic. This is infill redevelopment. With respect to safety, um, which fall under the categories of, of crime, trespass, and loitering, um, one of the things QT is is a safe place for at-risk youth where at-risk youth can come to the store if they have a domestic youth, domestic violence issue, or they need a safe place to, to get some help. QT gets them in touch with the proper organizations. 
uh, or they'll call the local PD department to get involved. Um, that's the next bullet point. QT partners with local police to make sure that nobody's loitering, theft, um, they share uh, camera and video footage with, with police officers if there's an accident on, on the adjacent roadways. Um, QT's policies for their staff, because we've been asked that a lot. How, how, what, is the, um, what do the QT employees do to make sure that nobody's loitering on the site? Their policy is to be friendly, fair, but very firm. They ask people to leave. If the people won't leave, they call the local police department to get them out of out the property. Um, they're trained to, to deal with theft and things that happen inside the store. I don't know if you, I'm sure you've all been to a QT, but when you walk into one, the first thing they say is, welcome in or welcome to QT. Um, and that's purposeful. They want the, the connection, the communication, and the eye contact. And there's other employees walking around the store, restocking shelves, mopping floors. It's all purposeful. It's all that connection with their customers. Great customer service, but also that's how they, they monitor and police their stores. Uh, and they have strict policies on alcohol and tobacco. They, um, they're, all their cash, cash registers pop up a, a little signal that requires IDing when you try to buy alcohol or tobacco. And the only person that can override it in the store is the store manager. So that's one of the things that just happens automatically. Um, I'm sure you'll hear from the opposition that speaks today that, uh, what about our schools? We're gonna have all these you know, kids that are gonna go there. I think it's a good thing. Give them a place to go and get a, a croissant sandwich after school or a, I don't know if kids eat Twinkies anymore, but. Twinkie or a soda or something, and it's it's all on the same side of the street. Right now, they have to go to the opposite side of the street to Burger King, to Sprouts, to Chevron, uh, whatever it may be. But this this is a really close connection, uh, Commissioner Koshal. We will add a a sidewalk over there. I think I think it was missed. I think we should have one there. It's a good idea. That'll keep the kids out of traffic when they walk down from from Seton. Um, Seton has no no objections. We told them we'd build a seven foot wall on the north side of our of our site and walked out of there and said they have no concerns. They've sent an email into the city. Um, you may hear that the schools don't want it, but they have no problem with it. Same time, same thing with tutor time. We've, we've talked with tutor time and they have no objections. We're working with them on waste wayfinding signage and an issue with like a dumpster location, which I don't quite understand yet, but we're, we're talking with them. And I understand planning staff's also reached out to tutor time and they have no objection or no opposition to the QT. Uh, but other than the issues, it's why QT? What's good about QT? They're a high-end reputable company. They, they create jobs. They have dozens, they employ dozens of workers at each location, including vendors and all the other um, ancillary businesses that go along with it. They, they're best in class. They have a kitchen in there. They have smoothies, they have fresh made food. Um, I get why the Chevron across the street might not want the competition. Might not want the pricing competition, the high end quality food competition, the fuel price competition, which I read some of the opposition or some of the support emails. We're really excited to have um, some competition on fuel pricing. Um, it'll add sales tax revenue to the city of Chandler. That's how we pay for services, police departments, uh, capital improvements, things like that. It'll provide necessary goods to the area, but this is infill redevelopment. There's always challenges with it. There's many different opinions that go along with what, what should be developed where in areas that are being redeveloped. Uh, and overall, this is a low traffic generating use compared to what was originally approved on the site, thought was going to be developed on the site, and they're mostly pass by trips. At the end of this, just gonna ask for your recommendation of approval. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Questions for the applicant. <clears throat> I have, I've got a se several for you and we'll go to the audience after that. Um, you talked to, gas stations are not by right on this site and you talked about drive throughs So I just wanna make that clear. That's why you're here in front of us <clears throat> to change the PAD. Um, 
And I appreciate the safety factor of adding a sidewalk. I think that's super important because you also do have kids from Anderson that are on the other side of the street, so getting over there. But um, <clears throat> and one other comment, the original plan that you showed didn't get built. So it, you can't talk apples to apples from something that was approved 25 years ago and changed. But um, is this a 24-hour operation? Yes, 24-7. And, and, and my comments are not against Quick Trip at all. I just want you to know that I use their facilities. They're great. They're great corporate partners. I've, you know, um, I just have some issues with the land use on this, just to be honest with you. But um, in terms of sustainability, as we look down the, the road, we look at this with drugstores. Oxco was built before that, you know, that changed. But what's the sustainability factor for Quick Trip's plan in terms of if EVs explode and there's not a need, and you're, you're talking about, you know, the sustainability part of it, what what is the plan as a reuse, or you know, are there thoughts about that as well? well thank you, Chairman. Uh, we could talk for hours about <laughs> what's next: EV, hydrogen, whatever it may be. QT's told me that they constantly have a whole team devoted to where are gasoline sales going, where are EV charging stations needed. Right now, Quick Trip doesn't do uh, EV charging stations or hydrogen fueling stations, uh, but it's on the top of their researching list of what they're looking at. Um, if I asked them about hydrogen. They said it's not that difficult to convert a fuel station to hydrogen. It's plumbing, a tank, essentially the same thing. It's, what, it's gas, I believe, instead of, instead of liquid fuel. Uh, but it's it's it would take some construction and redevelopment, uh, but there's no plans to integrate any of that into this gas station at this point. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the rest of the commission? Okay. We're going to go to the, the audience, and you'll have a chance to come back. And so I've got a few speaker cards here. Um, if you want to come up and speak and state your name and address for the record, David Miller. <clears throat> You can have to state your name and address for the record. That'd be great. You have three minutes. Um, three is going to be tough. Well, I'll try. Just try your best. The green light, when the orange light goes on, you'll have about 30 seconds. The red light will ask you to, uh, to um, conclude. Okay. Thank Sorry. you. Uh, my name is David Miller, and I am the competition. My family and I have owned the Chevron market uh, uh, for 28 years now. I built it uh, just before Kevin Pulley got there in 1996. We opened in July. Um, you know, we, we, we got notice of this. We went to the neighborhood meeting, of course, because uh, that stores our family's life. Um, we have worked it hard. We've worked hard to keep a safe store. Um, we don't allow lo loitering. We don't allow vagrants. We, you know, watch people that steal. We're partners with the Chandler Police Department. And we do our best to keep a nice, clean, well-run site for 28 years now. And I think we've done that. Um, when we went to the neighborhood meeting, uh, Harley was, was, was a rep then, which I had emailed several times afterwards and never got a response and found out a couple of weeks ago that he had resigned and moved on. And so I got in touch with, uh, with uh, Ben, who was great to talk to and work with. And I asked him about the traffic study that the city of Chandler, we were told, was going to have, what was going to do. Then I found out later, well, the city of Chandler didn't do the study, but but Quick Trip had their own study done. And I thought, well, that's that's a little bit like the mouse watching the cheese, but that's okay. So I started reading through the study, and I had questions ju just like you. How can there be less traffic than a Quick Trip gas station, which is the busiest gas station in the country? Bar none, maybe Costco's more. But how could that be compared to an Osco? So I took it upon myself and I sought out a traffic engineer with over 50 years experience. He has done everything. I've attached his resume. And he went through the report. And let me just read just part of this. This is his findings. I went, I went back to their traffic study, the TIS, couldn't figure out why such a small study. Turns out it is only one third complete. There are three parts to a TIS. The first part is trip generation, which they did reasonably well. But the second part is called trip distribution, which allocates the general percent of the total trips in a regional or orientation of where trips are coming from and going to, 
north, south, east, and west of the site. This is then used to assign the estimate and peak hours directional mo movements in and out of the site driveways, which were, was never addressed. Very important to know. They did not do parts two and three. I'm surprised the city staff accepted this report. It will be important to estimate eastbound Ray Road arriving from the west. Some will make a U-turn. Others will use the Tudor Time driveway at the median break. Many drivers would use the shortcut through the Tudor Time driveway. How many, what percentage? Quarter, half, three quarters? Another failure was, uh, um, was the Another failure was a fa failure of the TIS consultant to estimate traffic impact, including queue links on the congestion of Ray and Dobson Road at the signals and a half mile in both directions from Ray within the half mile Dobson both directions. Special traffic capacity software is used to compare the traffic carrying capacity and so on. I'll get to the end. Because of the serious shortcomings of this TIS, you should ask PNC Commission to hold off on any decision until the TIS is fully completed. Um, he said he could either do it or he could look look what the city's traffic engineer does. But again, that's his quick analysis of a very short report. I've got his resume attached that I could hand to all, all of you, but he said it is a very incomplete traffic study and it doesn't address the main points of what's gonna happen at that intersection. Those points were left out. I don't know if it was on purpose or on accident, but it was a very short study. So well, that's- can I, can I ask you to wrap up, please? Okay, sorry. Um, you referenced the one thing, most dangerous intersection in Chandler. It was number three, only three behind Arizona Ave and Warner on a two-year study. Um, as far as people, we went and around, talked to the neighborhoods in every direction. Um, basically, we have got over 500 petition signatures of residents that do not want this use. We've talked to all four schools. Up until recently, Seton was backing us. Um, Tudor time, just as of this morning, was backing us. Maybe things have changed. Um, uh, but both the elementary and junior high do not want a quick trip and more traffic there because of the safety of everybody and um, the, the uh, church as well. I spoke with them. So basically right now, this intersection carries over 64,000 cars per day. It is one of the busiest in the city of Chandler, third most dangerous, four schools within a quarter mile radius, residents on the south side, and it is busy. I don't think anyone here can say it's not. The immediate idea on Dobson, great idea, because eastbound traffic on Ray is by and large, you're probably gonna have four to 500 cars a day coming through Tudor Times, most Western driveway to get the quick trip. It's either that or doing a U-turn at the intersection like we spoke about. Okay, Mr. Miller, I need to cut you off. So okay. Thank you though. Could I leave you guys with Absolutely. this? Absolutely, you, you can give it to the clerk. Okay, thank you. Next card I have is just says Philip. Like to come up and state your name and address for the record, it'd be great. You'll have three minutes, sir. Thank you. My name is Philip Butler, uh, 1989 West Ray Road is my address. Um, I am the general manager of Chevron at Dobson and Ray. I have worked at this store for the last 22 years and have, have seen traffic at this intersection go from bad to worse over the years. We have had many customers tell us how hard it is just to get in and out of our lot, especially during rush hour times. Myself and uh, employees will, will say the same. Placing a super busy QT on the opposite corner will no doubt increase traffic and the accidents at this intersection and cause people to be even more impatient, especially during rush hours, which also, uh, share the same times parents are dropping off and picking up their kids at the daycare and the high school that is directly behind and next door to this proposed QT site. Gas stations are always a target for homeless, panhandlers, drug users, and criminals. At our Chevron, we are very aggressive at removing these people 
that harass our customers and our employees. We have zero tolerance. Uh, QT, like other big chains, chains, seem to allow these people to do what they want, uh, making their stores a potential danger for customers, employees, and anybody in the area, such as children walking to and from school. I respectfully ask this committee to consider these serious points in, regarding, in regards to allowing QT to build there. Once it is built, there will be no going back and everything I mentioned uh, will become a huge 24 seven daily problem for this intersection and the surrounding area, the schools, the businesses and the surrounding neighborhood. And that, that's all I have. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next card I have is Jeff Lang or Long. You want to state, come up and state your name and address for the record, that'd be great. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Jeff Lang. I live at 2338 West Orchid Lane. That's the Dobson Terrace subdivision, uh, right there on the corner of Dobson and Ray. Um, I kind of wondered why nobody knocked on my door, because I'm, I'm right there. I'm here tonight to ask you, please do not let us rezone that empty lot. Um, I, I do not want to see that happen. I do think that it's a, a, a safety risk. I'm in the uh, profession of education, and anybody with students or anybody that works with students knows that we want our students to grow up to be productive members of society and also have healthy life choices. Um, I've been in QTs before. QTs promote uh, junk food, sodas, uh, cigarettes, tobacco, alcohol, all things that we, you know, in the education profession, try to keep out of the hands of our students. So I'm kind of concerned about that. In fact, I'm really concerned about that. And again, I kind of wonder why nobody knocked on my door because I'm right behind where this place would go in. And I've been out knocking on doors myself too because I think you know that there are people that do care about this issue and we need to look at more voices of the people in our local communities that would be impacted by this. Also, I'm also concerned about the traffic. Um, our students are generally smaller people that are easily overseen when they're crossing the streets and would be very worried about the potential of, of uh, careless drivers you know, running into those kids. Um, I'll, also, I wanna say one last thing too. I was at that, I believe it was October 3rd, it was that October meeting, and I asked a question there, you know, what would happen, um, you know, I, I'm concerned as somebody that lives in that area about the homeless populations that you know, can come into the QT stores and was told that, you know, uh, workers at QTs are trained to be able to handle any of those problems that arise. I've gone into a couple of QTs. I've asked people about that and have gotten no answer. Nobody's told me that they've had any kind of training. So it might be something to actually look into a little bit further. Um, on that note, uh, I ask you, if we're gonna put something there, let's put something there that's gonna better our community, not something that's gonna make it worse. And again, I'm uh, somebody in the community that actually lives there right behind where this place would go. And um, uh, I wish somebody from QT would ask me what I, I thought, but I never got a door knock. So uh, thank you. Um, that's all I have. I appreciate the time. Any questions for the speaker? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. The next speaker, Mike Collins. If you want to come up and state your name and address for the record, that'd be great. Um, Good evening, my name is Mike Collins. My address is on the uh, form I submitted. Um, I'm a long-term Chandler resident, uh, former Chandler employee over 20 years ago I was. Um, and I'm an immediate neighbor of the seven on the southwest corner of uh, Ray and Dobson. Um, I have my Seton Red on. Uh, my son is a high schooler, sophomore at Seton Catholic. And so I know it was commented by the people representing uh, quick trip that Seton's in favor of that. I'm on the booster club. My wife's pretty involved. Um, I would think they would put that out to constituents um, just based on the, the foot traffic that is there. Um, I, I request that members on the commission sometime next week or this week go out there anytime between about 7.50 to about 8.10 in the morning or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You have Anderson Elementary School, Anderson Middle School, there's a church school up there, Seton Catholic, um, and also Goodman is just west of there. Uh, my daughter uh, is at an elementary school nearby. 
and there's lots of uh, of walkers um, on there. Seton gets an early dismissal on Fridays at one o'clock. They have a closed campus where the kids aren't allowed to go out to to get food at lunch during the week, but on Fridays they have early dismissal. And if you go out there on a Friday afternoon, how busy it is. Um, on my personal side, I am in the development business, so I'm not against development. I just think uh, with the tutor time, which is uh, you know, uh, preschool, uh, daycare, uh, a facility immediately adjacent, and these other schools that you know perhaps um, a little more study should be done uh, based on traffic volumes. Um, you know, again, being a resident there, there is a serious accident in that intersection at least once, twice a week, and I know the city's done some improvements at that intersection within the last five years. They did a designated eastbound to southbound uh, turn lane. They've added a, a traffic signal to try to reduce uh, accidents and, and speed through that intersection. It's just uh, it's just a very da dangerous intersection that I think uh, city staff um, should do a little bit of more research. Uh, and I'm not saying this won't go through eventually, but um, there are more concerns and I, and cute cute. Um, Quick Trip did say they, they went through the neighborhoods. Um, you know how it is these days. You look out your window, you got your ring doorbell. You don't know who it is. Okay, so if they were gonna go through the neighborhood, cause I was there and I do, I believe I see these guys. They did come through my neighborhood. I, you know, I didn't answer not knowing who it was. An advance notice, you know, on your orange boards that say, hey, we're gonna have representatives coming through. You'd have got a lot more feedback um, talking to my neighbors. Like, hey, there were people soliciting in the neighborhood. We know what that was for. You know, a lot of people have opinions on it, but um, you know, you, you got to really, in this day and age, you got to you got to solicit that opinion. I don't want to take up any more time. I appreciate your attention, and I do encourage uh, you to at least drive by that intersection uh, on a school day, either right before eight o'clock or at three, and you can just see the, the the chaos that's already out there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next card, and I'm gonna. I believe it's Thomas, and I can't pronounce the last name. Um, it's okay. <laughs> you want to come up and state your name and address for the record? <clears throat> I always caveat when I'm about to butcher a name. I don't want to do it. So. Good move. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Thomas Sensman. I live just north of uh, Seton High School, Seton School. Uh, I'm actually a big fan of QT. Um, I think it's a class organization. Um, I've noticed around town <clears throat> they seem to buy <clears throat> extra land so they can have good egress into their properties. Uh, with this corner, I was interested in coming here to see how they were going to fix the problems getting into and out of. They haven't really done it. Um, and I don't, I'm in the construction business, development business. I don't do uh, traffic studies, but common sense, if I'm sure you've all been around a QT, they're very busy. It's gonna be busier than the uh, gas station across the street, for sure. So come, but somebody coming east on Ray, they're gonna flip you. There's no doubt about it. Or they're going to cut through where that that school is. That uh, what is it? Uh, tutor time. There's going to be a bunch of people going through there. I think that's really dangerous. I would love to have the QT in the neighborhood, but also going up north on Dobson. Once they get past whatever median's going to go in there, they're going to try and find a place to flip around in there and get back to it. Um, I don't think. Uh, QT has enough land to do what they usually do as far as getting egress to their property and making it where it's not dangerous getting in and out. But uh, there is no way that QT is not going to generate more traffic than an OSCO or a Walgreens. I mean, it's just, if you look at them. But I think they're a great store. I mean, they're probably, I think they're the best uh convenience store or gas station like that around um, but that's a brick with all that being said with that intersection as dangerous as it is 
this is a recipe for disaster. There's no doubt about it. There's just, you've got all those schools there, even with slowing down when there's during a the day, uh, was a 7.30 to 3 or 4. I never go through there over 35. I live there. There's just too many kids around, even on weekends. So uh, it would be a bad idea. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I have a, a card who doesn't want to speak. Melissa, I, I butcher your name, P-I-Z-Z-O. I'm opposed based on safety, security, and increased traffic, but you didn't want to speak, correct? <laughs> okay. Is there anybody else in the audience who'd like to speak on this item? If you'd like to, if you kind of come up and state your name and address for the record, please. <clears throat> we'll take turns. If the gentleman would like to go first, he's closer, and then you can follow. No, you're fine. Go ahead. Dwayne Lidman, 2301 West Palomino Drive. I just actually have a question. Uh, the, the median that they're going to put in on northbound Dobson will prevent you from turning left into the QT. It's also going to prevent you from turning, if you're southbound on Dobson, it's going to prevent you from turning east into the Fries. Is that median going to extend further to block the second entrance into Fries? Or every Sunday morning when I go to that prize, am I going to have to make a U-turn? So it's more of a question. Great question. Thanks. Staff, you want to address that? That is a really valid question. It's <clears throat> um, Chair and, and commissioners, that will not block the driveway that's north of there into the fries. Do you have a, Ben, can you put up the map of that? I'd like to get a better view and <clears throat> of what we're talking about here. There you go. Mm. Yeah, it's still north of this one. So this is the one that will, the median will extend past there, but um, the one to the north of that, it will not. So if you're trying to, and I guess, good question for the people who have, Here. that's a very busy Fry's intersection. Mm -hmm. Where would you be able to go in to go to the Fry's if you're now closing off that left-hand turn into the Fry's? So there's a driveway north of there that's still. Um, is it behind? Is it behind the the center? Um, it still has a front. It goes into the front. Yeah, could you? Sorry. Um, it does access through the front of the store. You could also access through the back through that driveway as well. But it does have a front access as well, in front of the shopping center that that runs on Dobson. What will we do without Google Earth, right? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Getting closer. Yeah, that's it. Just thinking. There we go. Okay. So, so yeah, it says Pesto's Italian Kitchen. Like, if you, you could go and in. in on that so you would have to go in where the pestos is mm -hmm. and what drive through that that parking lot there yeah you could go yep okay. I took over. so you could go in here and, and turn down that front aisle there okay has anybody consulted fry's shopping center about the cutting off of some of their egress and ingress it's a uh, very busy store i mean it's a busy busy store so i'm just kind of wondering yeah, Will you be able to make a left-hand turn from there onto Dobson, mm -hmm. going southbound? Yeah. Okay. The median will stop before this okay. driveway. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Ma'am, you you want to come up and state your name and address for the record? So we got that question answered, or partially answered. Hi. My name is Erica Dial. I live at 2012 West Tyson, so pretty close to this intersection. Just wanted to let you know that it's really hard to get support um, to get people here that are actually in favor of this QT because everybody I've talked to that live because we um, me and my husband we frequent a lot of the restaurants and we talk to a lot of people a lot of the regulars and everybody we've talked to is in favor of this QT it's just hard to get them to come support it so we're going to hear a lot of um, opposition which that's all you've heard 
Um, so I just want to let you know that there are people out there that actually want to see this happen and are excited to see it added, um, especially the competition for gas prices and stuff like that, having it there close. Because we do make extra trips just to go to the QT that's just a little bit further in China from where we are. Um, so just wanted to let you know that there are people that do want this. And it's just Thank you. squeaky wheel. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to speak on this item, sir, if you'd like to come up and state your name and address for the record? Yes, my name is Channing Brown. I live at 2323 West Salt Way. Um, I'm a high school coach at SCENE. I've been there for about 12 years now. And I use that area every single day probably two to three times a day. And I've seen the drivers. I've spent a lot of my life right in that area, um, eight to 10 hours a day. And putting a median right there would be just a disaster. The way the high school guys drive, guys and girls, I guess, you know, just high schools in general. You can't be biased, you can't be biased about I, drivers. Yeah, I'm trying not to be, but. <laughs> I was in high school at one point in time too, and you're gonna have accidents. You you just you're gonna I didn't outside of everything else, just that meeting there, you're gonna have people that run right through it. They're gonna tear up the cars. Um, it's a uh, it's there's a lot of people that turn in and out of that parking lot for school, and they go across the street. Um, people that turn into fries. I use that turn in. I go to that Burger King. I went there today. Um, Whopper Wednesdays, I, I kill those. And uh, anybody else, you know what I'm talking about? The new one, Whopper Wednesdays. So I also use that fries weekly. We don't go and buy like two weeks of groceries. We usually go it's like two to three days. And I swoop in there just because it's right there. And it is tough. When they say this is a, a, a serious intersection, it's the one that I focus driving wise every single time I go through it because it is, I've seen a lot of close calls, there's accidents there. To put that construction there, to put the, the median there, to, to have cars in and out around those kids. Dawson Academy is just a mile down the road. That's where my daughter goes to school. It's the same thing. Lots of cars, traffic when school gets out around 3, 3.30. There's cars in and out of there. It's just, it, it is kind of a scary, scary road right around that time every day. I really, really focus when I'm around there. And if you got people that aren't focusing, come through there, just worry about grabbing some gas or food or something. It, things can happen. I've seen a lot of close calls. It, the kids, they just run out on the street sometime when the light changes, and they're kids. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, Safety is kind of being a coach, being around kids. It's, it's a big thing. It's, a, it's, it's the young kids. They, they're, not, they're not as smart yet. They don't understand. And we just don't want to put them in, in the way. All right, that's all I got. Thank you. I think we have another speaker coming up here. So if you can state your name and address for the record. Meredith Moore, 1581 West Corona Drive. Um, what I'm hearing, the theme seems to be the traffic situation. That seems to be the ultimate problem with this. No objections to QT in particular. However, it seems a little counterproductive if we're having a capital improvement uh, on the intersection to make it safer, and then we're adding a component with a new business, are we kind of defeating the process? Are we creating another issue right after we fix the intersection to make it run a little smoother? And then we're adding the QT with the amount of traffic that they have. Are we correcting the problem? of the intersection. I think the two are related, and I think we need to look much deeper into the traffic flow situation and the reports, and if, in fact, the report was incomplete, perhaps we need to look at a little more detail before we make the final decision. That's my concern, because I'm in that intersection all the time, I'm in that fries, and I can tell you people are not gonna turn into where pesto is and come back down around to Fry's or go behind Fry's to park to get their groceries. That's that's a bit of an issue too. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Anybody else in the audience who'd like to speak on this? Okay. 
I'd like to do full transparency, give everybody an opportunity. So if you want to state your name and address for the record, it'd be great. It's Melissa Lalich, 265 um, North Colorado Street, still shocking. Um, I just wanted to add to this too a little bit. I wasn't planning on it, um, but I'm a big fan of QT, you know, free air for your tires. The food's great. I can go on, although I wish they'd bring the old coffee methods back. I like those better. Um, anyway, um, my concern is U-turn. Um, I, I will go out of my way to QT as well. And, and one example is the QT on South Arizona, um, I want to say near McQueen. To get to that one, if you're going northbound on Arizona Ave, you have to get to a light and make a U-turn to get back, unless you, before you get to the light, you, you cut into, I think it's El Sonic right there, and you go past the Sonic to get to the station, which isn't horrible, okay? But uh, if you get to the light to get to that one, you have to make a U-turn. It sounds like on this one, uh, a U-turn's a possibility as well. Um, I'm not a professional. I don't do traffic or anything like that, but as a driver, I think U-turns are more dangerous only because you have to take into account are there people crossing the street as you're going to do the U-turn? Are people on this end going to be making their right-hand turns just as I'm getting ready to do the U-turn? So there's a little bit more involved in that, I think. But um, that would be my only concern. I mean, it's more traffic. It's it's more, you know, and the children, of course, are the primary concern. But um, I think if you're going to increase the possibility of U-turns, that, that is a danger zone for me. And last thing I'm going to say, on the way here, I noticed on Ray Road, um, ironically, Ray Road in Arizona and Ray Road and Elma School, you know, they, there are turn signals for if you're taking a left, and you, you know, you, you, you're at a red and you're waiting for that green arrow to turn. They're very short, you know, and with traffic increasing, um, you have to really zoom, you know, to, to go left on a, on a green arrow only stop. And I think that increases the possibility of people who want to make that really quick green, you know, arrow turn take more chances. And so if you're going to go through with this, um, my suggestion was, would be to look at the length of time on your arrows on that corner as well, because that is where they have the traffic things for speeding. But um, between U-turns and the left arrow turns, I think those have a potential for problems. Just my concern. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks for the opportunity. Appreciate it. Is there anybody else in the audience who'd like to comment on this? Okay, I'm going to close the floor. I do have a question for our traffic engineer. So I'll give you an example. Dobson and Chandler Boulevard, we widened that intersection probably seven, eight, nine years ago now. Um, it's a real long walk there across seven lanes of traffic. If you've got kids from Anderson Junior High coming in Anderson Elementary School that are going to potentially go up that way and cross a widened intersection. What's the safety factor in terms of that? I mean, is it, I, I'm a little concerned about it as well. You, you widen that, but then it's a longer process to get across, whether it's a mom with a stroller or whatever it might be. And I know at Jan and Dobson, it's, people don't necessarily always get across. So you want to address that a little bit? Sure, Chairman. Um, we look at the length or that people will be crossing and we time it for that. So. If we're widening it, we will be lengthening that walk time as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Vice Chair. Um, can you speak to, with your capital improvement project, is there a traffic analysis that either the city undertakes or you hire a consultant to analyze the traffic, analyze what you just talked about, signal timing, progression through this corridor, north, south, east, and west? And also the lengths of those, what I imagine are going to be turn lanes that you would be creating for, let's say this intersection we were just talking about, which won't be closed off, which it looks like it goes into Seton on the west. And then of course we talked about it going into Fry's. That'll be a, a full turning movement intersection. So as part of your analysis with your CIP and the design that your consultants will go under, what do they do to analyze traffic in and out of this area, in particular the school. Um, I live by Hamilton and 
that is a very challenging intersection. I think any intersection, frankly, in our city near and adjacent to high schools in particular, because you have typically newer, younger men and, and women, young men and women driving. Like you weren't biased on that one. I was not biased. <laughs> Um, so young students, um, and so there needs to be a particular caution, but in particular, I'm familiar with that intersection very well, and there's definitely medians, there is limited access. So long, long roundabout way out here, I'm asking you, what can you tell us about what you'll analyze so that we can all be better you know, aware of how you go about doing that final design of what your roadway improvement is going to look like? Great question, and through the, the chair, vice chair. Um, at this particular location, it will include both the driveway that we're talking about that is um, would be into the QT, as well as the driveway um, north that would still allow access to Fry's, full access to Fry's. And we do analyze those things. We hire a consultant, and then some of the signal timing stuff we do in house. But for the most part, the consultant helps us analyze as far as. What turning movements are we going to change? Where would they go to instead if they can't access the same way? So we can look at what those numbers are and what those changes are and, and do the Q links like you talked about. How much storage do we need at that location to accommodate those changes that we're making? Um, so that is something that absolutely will be done with the, with the CIP project that we're doing. We've done a preliminary study um, that helped us to kind of to give a very basic concept of what we were going to do and that helped us get the safety funding as well so we have some general ideas but this next step through the design will get us refined and get us more details on what that looks like um, hopefully that answered your question yeah no that's fantastic okay. so to parlay that into some comments earlier as it related to um, the existing information provided by the applicant was a TIS versus a TIA can you speak to, in general terms, the difference between those and what triggers one versus the other? Why, you know, what information you get from that? Sure. Great question again through the chair, vice chair. Um, we have different criteria of when we do a traffic study or when we need a, a smaller version, which is a traffic statement, um, or if we need one at all. In this case, we did not request a traffic study of any kind because the it wasn't going to be a more intense use than what was originally approved or what could be built on the site now being fast food or whatever um, so the uses that are permitted by right are you know potentially more intense than what we could see so this did not require any traffic study the applicant did give us one which when they you know even if we didn't require it we do review them and take a look at that so this if we would have required one, it would have been a traffic statement, which is basically just you know a trip generation statement of what is allowed by right, what was there previously versus what they're proposing currently. So that's what this study did. It, it should not have analyzed the trip distribution. It should not have analyzed driveway movements. That's, that's if we did a full traffic impact study. Um, and we do have requirements for that. We do have criteria for that. But again, this site did not require that. So can I address something? I keep hearing this use of the fact that it's less intense than what was approved 25 years ago. What was approved 25 years ago did not happen. Understood. Okay, so I, I, I guess that just, it's bugged me a little bit on the staff report. I'm just being honest, it's, it's, it's a different use. A lot of things were changed, Seton added space, things like that. Can you answer one more question for me on traffic? Um, other than red light camera, red light runners and speed is making a u-turn considered one of the more dangerous the probably the next most dangerous on the intersection if people do it correctly no if if it, it it tends to be a problem when people are turning right and are not paying attention to somebody that's u-turning okay. so it's adding a danger if people have to make a u-turn it, it, in a perfect world it wouldn't happen but people don't pay attention okay and that is something that's within our control if we see you know there is an increase of crashes or there's a, a safety reason to prohibit u-turn we absolutely have that right and can and can make that correction i, I do laugh around town there's plenty of places that have no u-turn mm -hmm. signs and nobody cares so it's like you know, <laughs> anyway thank you very much i do appreciate all of your course. answers and stuff so if the applicant would like to come back up and rebut anything or talk about any of the comments from the public that'd be great Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to make it very brief because 
we're all talking about the same thing, traffic, schools, and safety. Um, so I, first I wanted to clarify when we talk about what's approved in the PAD, what I said earlier was never intended to say a gas station was approved. And I, and I was never intending to say the entire PAD could be developed. But certainly the site, this two, two and a half acre site, has permitted uses that could be developed on it based on the uh, what's provided in that PAD, such as drive-through uses. So a two and a half acre site, you're looking at either one fast food restaurant or two fast food restaurants. We analyzed that in our traffic study. Not sure if you've gotten the, that deep in the weeds, but the traffic would be very similar. So I believe that's what Dana was saying. The, the use that's being proposed is similar or less than what could be developed on the site as by right in the PAD. Not 60,000 square feet, 67,000 square feet of retail, but just on this two and a half acre site. Uh, I hope that clarifies what I intended to say earlier and I think what Dana intended to say here. Uh, much has been made about eastbound Ray. Um, there's three options, really. There's a left in at the median break that's further west on Ray. There's the U-turn option, and there's also a Chevron across the street. So you don't have to go to QT. Other people will, will go to the Chevron to get their gasoline. So at this location, there's actually much more options than some other locations where there's only a U-turn option. Um, I, I, this isn't my first QT I've worked on. Usually we're, we're up here where we're talking with staff about how to get a left in. Usually that left in is too close to the intersection. So this, every county, municipality I'm aware of keeps pushing that requirement farther and farther away for that median break to occur. And so a lot of times now we're forced with only a U-turn. Here I just want to bring up the fact that you have three different options if you're a driver and you're going eastbound Ray. Uh, similarly, if you're normally a westbound driver on Ray, you're probably taking a U-turn to go to Chevron today. Um, I heard this, the general manager say that there's some challenges getting in and out of their site. QT could help some of that, alleviate where people go. You heard something about a trip distribution model. People will distribute based on what's convenient for them in the PM hour and the AM hour. We all do it. We're creatures of habit. Um, don't need an engineer to tell that to you guys because everybody here drives every day. Um, uh, lastly, I just want to um, mention that, um, sorry, I didn't catch your name, but the, the dad from the Keaton Booster Club asked if we did a pedestrian count of students that walked by the site. We, we actually did. I didn't present it earlier. <laughs> but in the morning, and this was done on Tuesday, October 17th, between the hours of 7 to 8.15 in the morning. In the morning, you had four students walking to school through that segment. In the afternoon, between 2.30 p.m. and 4 p.m., there were two students that were walking south. So that's counts from the traffic engineers, professional people who, who work for her. I just, uh, I just want to ask a question on that. October 17th, and I guess maybe the seating guys, was that fall break? I just asked that. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was not? Okay. I just was curious, because that's right around fall break for everybody in Chandler. So. Okay. When that question came up, I asked our traffic engineer that because, okay. yes, I'm, okay. I'm aware of traffic. But I, I, I just like to close in that saying, Erica took my thunder when she came up here. People in opposition come out in droves, and they, they have opinions. Everybody has opinions. When we walked the neighborhood, like our map showed, we talked to seven people in, the, in support. Only one was in opposition. Um, like I said before, this isn't my first quick trip I've worked on, and it's the similar debates and similar discussion we have on almost every site we work on. There's there's a ton of QT supporters. You heard QT supporters here today, um, and there's other people who don't want the, the development to be by them, um, and that's okay. Uh, we request your approval or recommendation of approval here tonight. Thank you. Any more questions for the applicant? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I'm going to close the floor at this point. <clears throat> I'm going to make a couple of quick comments. Um, I have no objection to Quick Trip. I think they do a great job. I've been in plenty of them around the state. Um, I think to me, as, uh, as a commissioner, 
this is a land use, this is an intensity, whether there was two students or four students, when there's basically an empty lot there, there's probably no reason for anybody to go down there. Um, I do have a concern about the safety factor of the students, this intersection being one of the most dangerous intersections in Chandler, whether we improve it or not. Um, so I'm gonna to listen to the rest of the commissioners, but I just, based on what I've heard and what I've studied on this thing, I have some issues with this going forward on this corner, so, but I'll open up to the commission. Thanks for anybody. Anybody wanna throw a motion on the floor? Okay. Let me, <laughs> so let me make a stab at it. I don't have my agenda. Uh, well, I will make a, a comment. Um, and I do appreciate all of the, the feedback, all of the answering of questions, and certainly those who live in the, the vicinity of this. Um, your opinion is very valid and um, very much appreciated you coming out here tonight and participating in our city and in the process. Um, what I do appreciate about this site being developed with this use is um, the opportunity to turn what is um, currently an unused corner into um, something that will be of a benefit to the community, to the members um, living in this vicinity. And I do believe it is a, a best in class use. And um, overall, I feel as though uh, with traffic mitigation and care and attention given to the operation of the facility that um, it can be a good addition to this corner. So with that, I make the motion to uh, approve um, this, I forget the number because Item I don't have five. my agenda. Uh, motion to approve PLH 230044. Um, were there any changes with stipulations, David? Yeah. With the addition of a sidewalk that um, directs pedestrians uh, from Dobson more closely to the entrance to the QT. I second. Sorry, I have a first and a second. Any further comment from the commission? Okay, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? I'm opposed. So motion carries four to one. Um, to the audience, we are a recommending body to the the city council staff. When does this come to council? This, uh, Mr. Chairman, this would go to council on March 20th. Okay. So you guys will have an opportunity both for and against to be able to speak to the city council at that time. So, okay. Other items, staff, anything tonight? Commission, anything tonight? So, okay. Uh, we don't have a meeting the first week of March uh, for the residents of Chandler. There's a lot of stuff going on in the city, including the Ostrich Festival in March and a lot of other events going on downtown. So check out the city's website and the chamber's website as well. And so everybody have a good night.